we'll now move on to the next live surgery session. May I invite our moderators for this session, uh, Alan Goodgood and Vinay Pandey, to come up to the stage. Uh, the live surgery three is a BTB ACL reconstruction with extra articular tenodesis. Uh, the faculty performing surgeries, uh, Arumugam and Bhupesh Karthik. Uh, over to you, Anshu, in the theater. Thank you, sir. So we uh, go on to live surgery three now to be done by Arumugam, sir. Uh, from Chennai. So this patient is a 22 years old male. He is again moderately built. He is a student who plays only recreational sports. He fell down from a motor bike in January 2022 last year. He complained of immediate knee swelling and since then he's had two prominent episodes of uh, instability and he's currently unable to squat or play sports. That's his clinical finding. He has almost 15 degrees of hyperextension. So that is the opposite knee and the knee goes to full flexion to about 140 degrees. So prominent hyperextension, no restriction of flexion for this patient. There is no effusion, the patella glide is normal and on flexing the knee and performing McMurray's, there is a prominent click which is heard. That's a grade 2 Lachman positive and a grade 2 drawer positive indicating anteroposterior instability due to ACL laxity and pivot examination was grade 1 to 2 in the office. The dial test is negative so there is no involvement of the posterolateral corner in him and his gait is also normal without any antalgia. Long leg films reveal that he has bilaterally symmetrical uh, varus knees and this is constitutional and bilaterally almost similar. MRI scans reveal an ACL tear. There is also a probable grade 2 signal in the medial meniscus posterior horn indicating a tear. Porto KT examination to look for anterolateral laxity does not reveal significant uh, rotary laxity. So we are dealing with a patient who has ACL instability, significant hyperextension and a probable medial meniscus tear. The plan is to perform a left knee ACL reconstruction, a uh, graft is a BTB, a medial meniscus repair if found and lateral tenodesis depending on the surgeon's choice. So uh, Aru sir will explain his plan for the surgery now. Good afternoon, I am Dr. Arunugam. I will be discussing the surgical plan for the third life surgery. So this patient we are planning for a BTB graft and uh, first thing we need to check on the x-ray is any Petala alta, actually it doesn't have, otherwise x-ray is uh, unremarkable and if you see the MRI, it confirms the diagnosis of uh, uh, ACL tear and often the question arises with the BTP graft, one of the reasons why it become unpopular is the mismatching of the tunnel length with the tibial tunnel length with the bone graft and the most important thing is we have a lot of planning, pre-planning. We do uh, templating of the BTP graft. So the MRI shows the, I also presented this paper in our Indian Arthroscopy Society meeting. This is a patella, this is a tibial and tibial tuberosity. This is a effective tendon. Okay. And we can plan how much ton of the tibia. This has to be harvested. That's the very key part and that's the success of a surgery depends on this. If you don't take the tibial tongue, then effective length of the tendon becomes more than even if you take a bone plug here, sometimes it may mismatch and hang out. So this gives the idea of what should be the uh, tendon length and if you take the bone plug, what will be the effective tendon. Uh, normally we plan for about um, 25 millimeter length on the patella, then about 25 millimeter of tendon intraarticular and then about 40 to 50 millimeter in the tibial tunnel. So that's what we'll be planning for uh, today. Arvo. Guys, we, we can't hear you. This is uh, Al Getgood. Do 
we have the connection to the OR? Bupesh, Dr. Bupesh. Backwards. Can so, someone just confirm what's happening? Okay, perfect, thanks. Okay. So we're going to be seeing a patella tendon graft here. So interestingly, we're, we're calling this the gold standard. So the gold standard for ACL reconstruction along with the lateral tenodesis. So be interesting to see um, whether or not everyone agrees with that. So there are lots of ways of harvesting patella tendon graft. You can do a single incision. Uh, this is an oblique incision that they're going to be showing. We can also do a uh, double incision, either through transverse incisions or longitudinal incisions. Um, and many of these techniques are utilized really to try and uh, reduce the graft harvest morbidity. I noticed uh, Andy mentioned earlier on in the session there that they're talking about the, the donor site morbidity that one can get from a patella tendon graft and anterior knee pain. And I have to say, I think it's, it's not as bad as, as often made it out to be. And I think it's with, with newer techniques of graft harvest, bone grafting, the defect, and really being, being very meticulous with your, with your uh, harvest you can really significantly reduce the morbidity associated with this particular graft. Yeah, uh, so just uh, raise of hands. How many of us are doing PTB ACL reconstructions in the delegates? Just raise of hands. So not too many people are doing PTBs. So hamstrings, how many of us are doing? So it's evident, I mean 90%, more than 90% people are doing only hamstring grafts. So that's very nice to see this surgery. Uh, Dr. Arugam sir is doing 50% of ACLs as PTB. Uh, he is dealing a lot into this sports population. So one must say this surgery is going to be very helpful. Uh, Dr. Arugam? Yes? Just a second. Can you hear us there in the auditorium? Right. Aru, okay. Sir? Right. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Arugam, can you please go ahead? Yeah. Uh, can you go back? The video starts from the beginning, please, Anand. Yeah, good afternoon to all. As you all heard, uh, BTB is uh, known for its uh, so-called uh, many complications. That mainly because of harvesting technique. First and foremost, the position to start with should be about 40 degree. I make a oblique incision on the skin. So no middle incision, about three to four centimeter. Today I may make it, make it longer for the demonstration purpose. Only skin is a oblique. Once you do that, I will use the skin hook and make the incision into the midline and go up to paratenon. The paratenon is a very important structure. You must identify and carefully dissect and repair it unless you have the uh, uh, contributes to the antinee pain as well as the weakness of extension. So I am going layer by layer. Now I am cutting the Peritinon. And now every dissection is on midline, only skin on the oblique. So I take this incision on peritinon all the way up to the patella. When I go up to the patella, the assistant will move into the extension. When I go down to the tibia, it will be inflection about 40 to 45 degree. So there is a mobile window technique. This small window on the thin incision subcutaneous will move over tibial tuberosity, mid part of the tendon, and the patella. Thereby, you avoid a long incision on the skin. So, slowly, carefully, you dissect the peritinon all the way down over the tibial tuberosity, and insert your scissor like that, and completely free the additions of the septenius over the tibial tuberosity and tendon. Okay, once I am satisfied with that, 
I make the cut on the tendon. So but I, I'm still not satisfied with the extension of the exposure on the tibial tuberosity. Normally, the length of tibial tuberosity will be about uh, uh, 25 to 30 millimeter. The, for the patella, 25 millimeter length, what I take. So clearing some more of uh, soft tissue over the patella tendon. It takes a little longer than harvesting the hamstring, but this is all the, the technique matters, whereby you overcome all this uh, anti-knee pain, patella tendon rupture, or patella fracture, which are so commonly, or so uh, abundantly reported in the literature. It is not the problem with the graft, the problem with the surgical technique. You can forward that now, Anand. It will forward. Yeah, forward. Haru sir. Okay, now uh, stop, stop. Now I'm making the incision on the pedal tendon. Now the knee position is 90 degree, about 10 millimeter width. Then I go over the tibial tuberosity. And go up to the tibial tuberosity, there's a point I go down, the lower end of the, my bone plug from the tibial tuberosity. Okay, then I make some drill holes, uh, complete the incision on the, my bone plug on the tibial tuberosity, and see how much far into the tibial tongue I can get into, that is the mid portion of the patella tendon. And you have to make sure the cut on the tendon is perpendicular. And I make these drill holes before harvesting the bone plug. This is to pass the ethibone or anything to pull. If you try to put it after harvesting the block, then there may be a risk of fracture. So I put these holes, mark it with a sketch pen, so that it's easy to identify afterwards. Right. Then I take the saw, and the saw should be not the regular saw. What do you use, the pen size uh, saw, very small one, what the plastic surgeons use so that the stress on the tendon or bone is far less. And never use osteotome, you know, before they used to do a lot of multiple drill holes, then the osteotome to deliver the bone plug. That was the uh, disaster for, uh, for the, uh, the recipe for the disaster. So you should avoid all that. And, uh, and all the angle of the saw blade with the bone. On the tibia, it could be 90 degree. But the patella should be around 60 or 70, as you can see here. And there's a mark on the saw blade, how much deep you can go in. And when I go up to the tibial, the tibial tongue, go up to almost 20, because I've seen on the MRI, the tibial tongue curve back. Unless I go full length of my saw blade, I won't be able to get the tibial tongue. So I complete the same procedure on the other side. And you can forward it now on a little more. Are you, are you taking a, a standard width of a 10 millimeter or do you calculate the width of the patella tendon and take the central third? Uh, yeah, good point, but normally in our population, central third comes to 10 millimeter. And uh, there are some zigs to do that. And here, here stop on it. So now I have uh, used only osteotum to deliver the bone plug never used to hit it. So, uh, so once you do that, now I cover the tibial bone plug, knee into full extension now. So the mobile skin window can be easily pulled over on the patella. You can forward it now. Yeah, coming back to your question, uh, Dr. Gladwood, and uh, there are some patella harvesting uh, uh, tendon graft. I don't use them. I started to use, but uh, of the experience now, eyeballing and take middle one third, which is about 10 millimeter. Now, so uh, I want the, okay. So now I made the skin incision, uh, the bone plug of 20 millimeter. Uh, okay, uh, go slow, go slow. Now the important, I got the apex of the patella. The apex on the both sides should be equally cut. And again, the angle of the saw, what I hold now is 60 degree, never 90 degree the angle to the patella. Okay, you can forward it now. So, you should be like a 
clinical thing, and you do, do that, and also above, so prevent the stress rises, then gently use the osteotom to deliver the graft. So the graft is now harvested, and now you can bring the uh, camera to the uh, table. Also, I have prepared the camera here, please. Can you see the graft? Uh, can we go back to the graft prep? Like we can't see the graft prep now. Yeah, I'll, I'll go back. Okay. So now this is the BTB um, graft. It is a, what I call is a, a new age BTB graft. What we normally used to have is uh, from the patella plug and the tibia plug without the tongue. This is very critical, I tell you, because this is the amount goes into the femur is about normally about 25, right? And this tendon, if I don't have the bone plug, the tendinous portion becomes almost 50. That's too long. So with this tongue, the effective tendon length is become only 25 or 30. So there's the interarticular portion. The rest, uh, rest of the tunnel, entire 30 to 40 of the tibial tunnel will be filled with the bone. Sometimes even I have to, at the end, I may trim of the tibial tongue. And the normal size I use is um, for the, uh, goes into the femur about uh, 10, what is it? Yeah. Right. 10. 10, maybe uh, 9 or 10, I think here 10 is easy. And the tibia will be 11, one size bigger and easily going past. Okay? This is to get the, um, anatomical foot point on the femur. And again, I am going to use the trans tibial technique to do the BTB reconstruction. Here, I went in already, the diagnostic uh, uh, middle meniscus normal, lateral meniscus normal. Do you want to do the, uh, uh, show the recording uh, diagnostic round uh, on us? Uh, do you want to do the diagnostic arthroscopy round? Uh, right. if, if, uh, if, if you're happy with the diagnostic, I think we can probably yeah. move on with just doing the ACL. That'd be great. Okay, fine. So now intercondylar notch. Here, notch is a bit narrow. And so I'm doing a little bit of notch plastic. Yeah, give me the shaver. I use the uh, scoop. Now I'm using the shaver. Haru, sir. Shaver, increase, increase. Okay, Haru, come, sir. Yes. So there's an article by you which says uh, it's a myth that you have anti knee pain with PTB graft harvest. Yeah. So uh, I have read that article. So anything specific that you would like to suggest regarding harvest, uh, why yeah. your, your patient doesn't have anti knee pain? Yeah. Why I call the myth is, so you all think only anti knee pain comes with uh, scoop, please, with the BTB. Also with the AMP think the anti knee pain is there. Okay. They, they reported high. That's mainly because of the harvesting technique. I avoid midline skin incision. My skin incision is small, hardly about four centimeter, maybe one or two centimeter longer than my hamstring. And uh, I repair the parotenon at the end of the procedure. So with all this, uh, we published in the Indian Journal of Orthopedics about 1,200 cases uh, compared to with the uh, hamstring, or almost 600 each uh, limb two-year follow-up, no significant difference in the anti-knee pain in our group when they use this technique. Okay, so now, uh, as I said, is a trans technique. So I'm now going to make the tibial tunnel. Before that, I'm going to mark my femoral footprint where I want to, okay? So there are various uh, Marking, what I follow is uh, what Stephen Howell says, 50% uh, of lateral wall. You know? This is the about 12 o'clock in the lower, and I will take this as a, my entry point, and that I'm marking through the middle portal, how we normally do, as Dr. Sundarajan showed for the hamstring. I'm marking this footprint, the anatomic foot point through the middle portal. Mallet. And I'll show you how I can reach this someone. Trans tibially. Okay. Uh, RF. Let me clear that more so that you can easily see. So 
So once I do that, just mark it clearly so that you can find the hole. Microphone, microphone second, please. Okay. Right. So now I'm going on to the tibia. Let me clear some of the fat pad here. All this uh, uh, lateral notch plasty stuff. I'm just clear that. Section, please. So maybe I'll just make a, a comment while you're working away there. Yes. Um, with the, you know, if, if those of you that are doing medial portal technique with a BTB graft, always important to maybe think about reducing the length of your of the bone plug going into the femur so that it gets it to, so you can actually navigate the bone plug into the, the femoral tunnel. Uh, whereas with a trans tibial, just because of the trajectory of the two tunnels, then it's much easier to pass that slightly longer plug. Yeah, uh, very good point. Uh, actually, we don't want to do the uh, skin knife. Please. To the medial portal, the bone plug, which will go into the femur, should be less than 20, ideally 18 or 19. Otherwise, you cannot flip the bone plug. So that's why I uh, still stick to trans tibially, where I can put about 25 millimeter of uh, bone plug into the femur tunnel. So I use the elbow aima, same like what uh, Rasundarajan placed. That's the point I take, right? And the important thing is the tibial tunnel entry point. The trans tibial technique is more like a marriage. Once you done the tibial tunnel, you can't do much to change your uh, uh, femoral tunnel. So the entry point, earlier on we used to do close tibial tuberosity. This one I follow as shown by Chabra. Entry point of the tibial tunnel is midway between the tibial tuberosity and middle border of tibia. Okay, okay. yeah. So this entry point is important. That's a good trajectory of getting the anatomical femoral footprint. Sorry, what, what angle of the guide were you using there? Uh, 50 normally. Okay, yeah, it's there, fine. Fine, I can remove this zig. So I do serial reaming, I start with eight millimeter and then 11 millimeter. Okay. Yeah. So as in case I try to preserve as much of uh, uh, remnant as possible, but if something comes in the way, we'll clear it. Scoop, please. Yeah. So this is where my table pin is hitting. Yeah. So Dr. Bhupesh is now coming in with the 8 millimeter rima. And keep the another TBL pin ready. Tibial pin again. Okay, so the proper hole. Okay, now come with the eleven. Okay, please. Okay. Shaver ready. Okay. Stop. Come. Shaver.
do you, do you find using that slightly larger tibial tunnel helps you get your position on the femur a little bit yeah, easier? Or do exactly. you have any other tips and tricks as to yeah. how you get anatomic on the, exactly. on the femur? So that gives my extra room for me to rotate the, my guide. I always use the femoral transfemoral guide. And see, normally, if I don't have a wider tibial tunnel, I can only go like that, which will lead to noon. So here, I can rotate in freely and down, you know, and you can see that's the point what we made through the middle portal. That's exactly the point which I mark, which I can reach. This is, I can achieve it by rotating my femoral lemma, which was possible because I have 11 millimeter bone tunnel. And if you see the exit point, the camera outside, you know, this is the midway between the, normally if it is the, uh, 11 o'clock or 9 noon, the entry, the exit of the pin will be anterolateral junction, where it is much lower where normally for the hamstring. So I am happy with the femoral tunnel position. So now, yeah, up and down. Now, okay. Now I use the flexible rima. Okay. knife. So with the flexible reamer, the risk of damaging the posterior wall of the tibial tunnel will be less. Yeah. Okay. Uh, knife, knife. Push the guide, yeah. the flexible guide pin, you can't put the same pressure as normally you do. So, yeah. Yeah. knife again. Push, push. I think length is not there. So you just find those flexible reamers just help you try and avoid blowout at the back? Uh, on the, on the uh, tibial tunnel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ah, okay, so, gotcha. Otherwise, here, when it, the 10 mm comes, uh, it may chop up the posterior part of the one. So here, no issue. Okay, now give me a pro, 25, right? Give me a pro. No, 25. Pro. Pro, please. Okay, go, go, go. Okay. Right. Stop, stop. Okay, yeah, stop, okay, some more, okay, that is 20, yeah, 25, all right, shaver, <coughs> can the shaver can speed go, go up? Go up Saline, please. Saline, can somebody change the saline? So in a minute I'll show you the familiar tunnel from the middle portal. We ran out of saline. Always happens at the most critical part yes. of the surgery, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. Other important thing is you must clear these tunnels very well, otherwise all the bone plaque all may be inside and especially with the 
bone plaque going inside, then you have a problem going all the way in. So take your time and clean the all the tiles. Give me a RF. I want to just clear that soft tissue is there because then passing my screw. <coughs> so there's a posterior wall. I have a very thin one to two millimeter wall there. So putting my screw to fixation won't be a problem. So clear that more. These soft tissues can cause a problem in passing the graft, so I want to clear it nicely so that passage of my bone plug will be easier. So have you gone f you've gone for a, a 10 diameter tunnel and you're putting a 10 plug in there? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you go line to line, okay. Yeah, so this is the view through the middle portal and you can see the, my femoral tunnel and uh, the posteriorly I have a nice one to two millimeter and this can't be more lower than this. So this is exactly what I get through my medial portal technique. So once I am satisfied with that, now I am going to clear the tibial tunnel entry point, which is, okay, before passing graft, as uh, is important for, uh, can I have a bigger please? hamstring and even more for BTB. Otherwise, all the soft tissues can be a big problem in while passing the graft. I want to clear nicely. This soft tissue can form like a sleeve and they can prevent passing the graft. It's critical for hamstring and even more for BTB. Okay. So what's the time? How long I you have? You've got 12 minutes. You're doing great. Okay. You're ready to pass the graft. In a minute. Okay, so this I am more or less satisfied now. Now, another trick I have uh, fixing in the camera moment. Okay, I will pass the tunnel notcher for placing the guide wire because uh, my graph size is 10 and the bone plug is 10, so hardly any space. So. I use this uh, notcher. Yeah. Hit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Shave again. So some people don't use any screw on the femoral side. Ten to ten will have a. Uh, bone to bone fixation, but I use uh, screw. Normally use uh, titanium screw, which is cheaper and also easier to put and less uh, uh, side effects like, you know, the bioabsorber screw will go into osteolysis, but the boss has asked me to uh, use me the... So screw. what side screw do you use? Uh? Normally, sorry? What, what size screw? Emerald yeah. size? Uh, 
normally about uh, eight. Yeah, give me the, uh, I'll pass the graph now. Okay, okay Langan back ready? Uh, okay, give the graph to me. Okay. The wires are passed into the bead pin. Put it up, put it up. Okay, yeah. Pull, pull, pull. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Now. And, and just while, while the graft is passing, could you just tell us your preferred orientation of the plug? The graft is passed. Here, the cancellous bone is anteriorly on the femur, okay, and the cortical goes posteriorly. Here also same. And now, ready to pass the screw. Okay. Now, the position of the thigh knee is 110, 120. I always use a starter. for a bio screw. Okay. Yeah, screw ready. So what bio screw are giving? Okay, okay, yeah, enough, yeah. Okay. Uh, the very important, you must have flexible guide wire. Otherwise, the wire may bend, then wire cannot come out because the position of the knee is almost 120. Go in, okay. Uh. Okay, yeah. So, um, just fixing. Other important thing is when you pass the bone plug, tendon junction should be at the end of tunnel entry. The bone, okay, you can keep the quick noise, quick noise, that's the good. Interference fixation. Okay. Long code artery, mosquito. Okay. Right. So, this is my. Extension. Okay. Fine. Uh, this is my graph. Okay. Bend down. Bend down. And this is the my bio screw. Can you see there? Uh, yeah, the, we can uh, see it right there. Yeah. And, and there's just uh, at the end of the tunnel, you shouldn't be projecting out or more inside. So now I'm okay to fix the tibial end. Yeah. Yeah. Full extension. What's your uh, tibial screw size? Nine. Nine size. Nine by. 25. So, you do, do you make any change when you're using metal screws or it's same with uh, peak screw or uh, the metal screw or this biocomposite screw? Peak screw, I'll go one, one side higher and you can, the, you can hear this squeaky noise. Yeah, we can hear the squeeze. Yeah, yeah it's beautiful fixation. So, Maybe you could ask, what would you do if the if the plug is hanging out of your tunnel and unfortunately your pre-operative planning wasn't quite right? Do you do you have any tips or tricks that you can deal with that tunnel mismatch? Yeah, uh, almost all the time when you have a good tibial tongue. Now, right now, in this case, the entire tibial tunnel there's a tibial tongue. Suppose if I don't harvest a good tibial tongue, everything outside, then a couple of things I can do. 
I can rotate the graph 180 degrees, that lessen the length of the graph, or strip off the bone from the tendon, make it the soft tissue at the end, so that can be fixed with a knotless uh, screw anchor, or make a tunnel on the periosteum and make a fixation. Okay. Give me a... Yeah, so there's a, there are a number of techniques that one can utilize to really deal with that problem, but I think clearly the, the pre-operative planning is, is key and trying to avoid it in the first place is, uh, is the best uh, method. Yeah, the bone graft, some, the, the tendon, some soft tissues are there. I'm just going to remove the... Uh, 90, 90 So are we going to do extra articular tendon disease also? Because we no. have four minutes only with us. No, I'm going to see it, whether it's uh, pivoting. Normally, I do uh, tendon disease only for the revision cases. When there is a grade three pivoting, here was only grade one. Okay, let me uh, probe, please. You did little bit of notch plastic, so you would recommend uh, notch plastic be done every case of PTB? Uh, no, this case yes, but not all the cases. Okay, so this is the, my graft, good tension. Okay, and also on the end of the tibia, there is not much of bone break out. Let me show you the lacman, very tight, no lacman, then pivoting, no pivot. You made look PTB look as simple as hamstring graph, sir. Thank Wonderfully you. demonstrated. Any more questions? Uh, we can take questions. We have time. Yeah. yeah and if anybody has a question, please come up to the microphone. Yeah, we've got a question on mic, mic three. Sir, I am from Bang uh, I'm from a Muslim country. Most of the uh, people in our country usually squat during praying. So. Yeah. My question is, should we use the bone patellar tendon bone graft? Although you said to reduce the knee pain, we have to use uh, inside small incision. My first question is this. Second question is, as a beginner of arthroscopic surgery, which tendon we should use first? Bone patellar tendon or semitic gasolis? Okay, so answer to the first question. If my patient is uh, athlete, I demanding athlete, even though he uh, is uh, uh, Muslim or where you need to kneel down or even for Christian when I go to church. So I do BTB. In fact, my good friend in Oman, Dr. Sayed Ramanathan, uh, he has been there for the last 20, 30 years. He always do BTB. Even now he is the BTB. In fact, he is present at that in his cause. So the religion or their kneeling activity should not interfere with the grab choice. Then the uh, second part of a question, which one to start with? Well, arthroscopy itself is a not an easy uh, alternative compared to open. So when you want to start something in a new area, you have to be familiar with all the graft. Not that I do BTB in all my patients. I do BTB, hamstring, peroneus longus. You must be well versed with all your graft options. And uh, one graft will not do for every patient each patient different. So to your learning process, I agree, maybe hamstring is uh, easier, but don't get uh, comfortable with that and don't uh, not trying the other graft. You have to always uh, go into your zone which you're not comfortable, that's where you learn and uh, make you a better surgeon. Thank you, sir. Myself, Dr. Ajinkya from Mumbai. What is the trick in order to prevent the shredding of the graft while insertion of the femoral screw? Uh, sorry, uh, come again, I can't hear you. Please. So, uh, it is attrition of the graft when you are putting the femoral screw. So, techniques. Yeah, the uh, main thing is I made this uh, tunnel notcher to make the wire placed in there. Otherwise, wire may not uh, stay in place. Then the screw may kind of uh, wind up the graft. And uh, the position of the knee is about 120, 130, so that your axis 
of uh, the screw fixation in a lane with the funnel tunnel. And you have to be careful sometimes in the bio screw, the screw can break when you try to fix the femoral side. Uh, so these are tips you have to have back of mind.